Hello there, Mark Cunningham here. And in this video, I'm going to show you through some invoice settings that you can set up in Xero before you start sending invoices to your clients. This lesson is actually part of a full course. So if you'd like to learn more about Xero, then check out the links in the description below. So let's jump into the Australian version of Xero's demo company now and get started. So to get there, you just go to the main drop down menu and settings. And then you can just go into invoice settings. And what we've got here is an invoice settings screen. And we're going to have a look at a few different things along the top here. So you've got these branding themes, you've got some default settings, payment services and invoice reminders. So we're going to start off with the branding themes. And what the branding themes are, is there a way that you can add a logo and some other details um, to your sales invoices? So here in the demo company, we've actually got a couple of them set up already. So that there's this standard one here, and that's the logo. And then there's this special projects branding theme here with an orange as a logo. So before we go any further, I'll just show you what that actually looks like. If we duplicate the screen and we go into invoices, and we'll just open this first invoice up here. Okay, so you can see here, one of the options in the invoices is this branding theme. And this one has got the standard branding theme, which is this one here. So if we preview it, you can see there that that logo has come through here at the top of the invoice. So that's that logo. And then also you can see here this from so this is from the demo company, 23 Main Street. So that's there in the contact details. And then further down, just as another example, you can see this little write up here about how to actually pay the invoice. Well, that's down here in the um, payment services and, and the um, terms and payment advice. So these are all things amongst other things that you set up in these branding themes. And then when you assign that branding theme to the to a particular invoice it all comes through um, on the invoice here so that's how it flows through let's have a look now at how to actually set up a branding theme so you'll probably want to set one up for your business so you, with your logo etc so what i'll do is um, in, instead of going into our new company and setting one up from scratch i'll just show you the options here in the demo company and you can use this as a guide so you just need to click on new branding theme to set a new one up. And then you need to give it a name. So that one was called standard and there was the other special projects one. So you can just name your branding theme. Then you can just choose some of these sizing options at the top here. So you can see there's A4 or US letter, centimeters or inches, and there's some margins and things as well there that you can play around with and see what you like best. And then you get down to these titles as well. So that one that we just looked at over here, the title of that one is tax invoice. And that's there. So if you wanted that to say something different, you can just change it there. You can just get rid of that text and change it. And then you've got overdue invoice as well. Maybe you want to call that actually tax, uh, sorry, overdue tax invoice, if you like. And you can rename all of these things. So you've got statements and credit notes, um, purchase orders, etc. When you've got your drafts, you can leave the word draft in there so people know it's a draft and um, yeah so it's really up to you to just go through and just name your documents whatever you like when you finish that you've got all these check boxes over here so here's one for show logo for example so no doubt you'd want to have that ticked and then you've got tax column um, payment advice cutaway which was that bit at the bottom and all sorts of other things so you just need to go through and select what you want your customers to be able to see on their invoices. And then you've got some um, tax subtotals as well, some, some settings there that you can play around with and see what you like. Um, currency conversions, well, we don't really have currency conversions on this invoice, but if you're using multi-currency, that's something that you'll need to look at. There's some payment services down here as well. So we'll look at those in a minute. I won't go through those now. And then just up here, you've got a, a few other little options such as whether your logo should be left or right. 
whether you show your taxes as exclusive or inclusive. So that's GST um, for Australia. And then you've also got your contact details as they should appear at the top of all your PDFs um, that you send out. So that was uh, this information up the top there. And then finally you get down to these um, terms and payment advice um, for invoices and statements and also terms for quotes. So that's where you write your little write up of um, how you want people to actually pay. So if I open this up again, that was the text down the bottom there. So if you've got anything specific that you want to say at the bottom of your invoices and your quotes, then you need to type it into here and it will come through. All right, so I'll just cancel out of there. And what we'll do now is we'll have a look at those payment services. Okay, so you can see in the little help um, blurb at the top here, it says add a payment service to your invoices to allow easy online payment for your customers. So when you email your invoices to your customers, if you have these connected payment services, they can pay via those services. So if you have a PayPal one, for example, then your customers will be able to pay by PayPal. I'll just close that now. If you've got Stripe, then they can pay by debit or credit cards by Stripe. And there's some other options down there as well. Now here in the demo company, there's actually two PayPal accounts set up. Both of, both of them are obviously fake accounts because this isn't real. Um, I, I don't actually know why they've got two set up. It's a bit strange, but um, for, uh, for yourself, you'll probably just have the one PayPal account, so you can just enable one of them. And then if you've got other payment services like Stripe, for example, um, you can set those up as well. So all you, all you need to do is just click on the Get Started button for each payment service. And then you'll be taken through a process depending on which one it is. So um, for Stripe, for example, you can click on the button here if you don't have an account and it will take you through to open a Stripe account and get things set up. If you do have an account, just click on there and you'll go through and set it up in a slightly different way. Um, if you haven't set up PayPal yet, this button here will say get started, but obviously there's two set up there. So it just says add another. And then it's the same for the other ones. So you just need to add these here. And then what you do is you go back to your branding themes. So let's just go into this first one here. We'll go to options and edit. And you just hook them up here. So payment services here for credit card. So if you had Stripe enabled, then you would be able to select Stripe there. And if you've got a PayPal account enabled, and this one's obviously got the two, so you can choose between them then you can enable it there. Um, you'll probably just have the one that you can pick. And then there's also a direct debit one there as well. So if you've got a way of um, allowing your customers to create direct debits by payment services, you can bring that through there. And when you bring it through, like I said, when you email your invoices to your customers, that will come up as an, as an option um, for them to be able to pay it so they don't necessarily have to go through their online banking through a, um, a batch payment or something like that. They can just pay by PayPal or whatever it is. So they're pretty handy services to provide um, to your customers. All right, so let's have a look now at the default settings. Now the default settings um, at the top here, you can see there's bills and the sales invoices. We're just looking at invoices at the moment. And what you can do is you can create um, a standard uh, payment term for your invoices, which most businesses do have. So it might be something like 30 days um, after the invoice date. So you can just choose um, after the invoice date here, or if you have other ways of doing it, you just choose it there. Now, when you put it in here, um, that will become the default for all of your invoices. And as we saw in the contacts lesson, you can actually um, put defaults in just for specific contacts as well. So it depends on which way you want to do it. Um, you don't have to do it here. You can see it says optional, but it's actually not a bad idea to put in a, a default here. And you can override it later on anyway, when you're setting up your um, contacts or you're creating individual invoices, you can just change it anyway. So that's the... Um, 
the default due date. Down here, you've also got things like um, prefixes for your invoices and uh, credit notes and quotes. You don't even need a prefix. You can actually delete that if you like. Um, a common one is INV dash uh, for zero. And then if you're going to create a new one, you can just start the next number at zero uh, or, or one, I should say. So the, the next number that you create will be zero, 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 one. I might actually put another zero in there. So next time I go and create an invoice, it will give it the number INV dash 0001. And then the one after that will be 0002, etc. So it's up to you to put in whatever prefixes that you like um, and make sure that the number sequences are starting from, from where they should. Okay, so the last thing on here down the bottom is just the quote expiry date. So maybe you've got quotes um, that you send to your customers and you don't want them to last forever. So maybe you just make them 14 days after the quote date, for example. So that's where you can do it here. And again, you can override it um, in other places as well. So you don't necessarily have to um, put that in here. All right, so I have changed a few things there, but I'll just hit cancel instead of save just to get out of here and leave everything the way it is in the demo company. Okay, so that's where you can go to do your uh, default settings for your invoices. And the last thing I wanted to show you is the invoice reminders. Okay, and like the help says here at the top, um, Zero can follow up overdue invoices for you. So it does that by email straight out of the system. You just need to choose the frequency. So we'll just hide that. So at the moment, we don't have any reminders set up. So we just need to tick the box there. And you can see um, when you've got that ticked, it's got uh, three emails um, ready to send there. So you've got seven days overdue, 14 days overdue, and 21 days overdue. You've got a, a fourth one there as well if you want to send four emails. You don't need to send three or four. You can just send one if you like. Um, it's up to you to just select whatever you want. If I go into edit, okay, you can see here, this is where you select um, whether it's overdue or due in and you put in the number of days and then you can reconstruct this email if you like, if you've got a different way um, of, of um, saying what you want to say to your customers, you can rewrite it in there. And you've got those placeholders as well, um, such as the trading name, the invoice number, etc., cetera, um, to automatically put some information in there if you like. So we'll just get out of there. Okay, so that's how you actually edit the emails. Um, you, you can also just select um, these things down here. So include a quick link to online invoice and detail summary. That's a good one um, to put in there. So when they get their email, it's got a quick link there. And then also just a PDF as well, if, because some people like to receive them by PDF still. So you can include the PDF uh, with the reminder, just like you did when you sent out the original um, invoice. Okay, so that's your invoice reminders. I'll just go back to invoice settings. And that's actually it for our invoice settings. So now we'll move on to the quote settings. So if you just go to the main menu and settings, and then go into invoice settings, and then just click on default settings, Okay, so if you come down here to the quote prefix, you can see here we've got QU dash set up as the quote prefix. So if you want something different in there or you want nothing at all, you can go ahead and change that. And we've also got the next uh, number in the sequence. Now we don't actually have any quotes in the demo company. So the next number is number one, but obviously um, if you've got some quotes in the system or you wanna start from a different number, then you can go ahead and change that as well. So I'm just going to leave it as is um, for this demonstration. And the other thing to look at down here is the quote expiry date. So let's just set that to say 30 days from after the quote. So I'll just click 30 and then just get this drop down here and choose days after the quote date. Okay, so you can choose something different if you like. It depends on, on what you want, but that's good enough for me. So I'll just hit save. 
Okay, so the other thing that you want to check is um, if you're going to use a branding theme, there's a few things in there to look at. So for example, down here, you can put a little bit of text in for the um, terms of the quotes, and you can see that there's none added in the standard theme, and there's also none added in the special projects theme. So let's just go in and actually add something in there. So I'll just go into edit, and you just come down here where it's got terms quote. So I'll just type some text in there. Okay, so I've just typed in that this quote is valid for 30 days from the date of issue, and that will show up um, in any quotes that we issue using that particular branding theme now. And the other thing to check is just over here, you've got your draft quote title and your quote title. So that's got some text in there already. If you want to change that for some reason, then this is the place to do it. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our quote settings and the end of this video. Okay, that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more free videos and also check out the links in the description below for our Zero courses. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.